And Liam's got one on. He's playing it now. I was just uh, packing up and on my way to work and uh, just as I've got to the car he's into a fish only lit them but they all count can't wait to jump the net cheers mate Mate, not bad for a few hours. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Happy lad now. Hey? Happy lad now. How oh, about you are? We ain't blanked. No. <laughs> Good lad. Cheers, guys. Liam's just had this uh, nice little common, around about 20. So, uh, just come down for a, an early morning session, and there you go, 20 pound common. Not bad. Well done, mate. Cheers, mate. There's Casper in shot there, he's a mid-30, he's only out the other week, about 34 and a half, something like that, so that's a big old fish to catch that off the top, but uh, I don't want to catch him today, I've already caught him before and uh, there's no point in just showing a fish to the camera that I've already caught, let's see if we can get one of the ones that I've not had before. That's the idea behind this tactic, is to single out one of the fish that you want to catch. And uh, although it's tempting to drop a bait on Casper's nose, I don't want to catch him again. There's a few of them down here now they're taking. And all I need to do is just drop a bait on their nose and away we go. But I'm just waiting, sitting and waiting for that one that I want to catch to come in. And then when he comes in, I'll just drop a bait on his nose and hopefully catch him. Sounds easier than it actually is, but that's the idea. Mr. Casper, look at him. 34 and a half pound he is. I could just drop a bait right on his nose now and catch him if I wanted to, but I don't. Right, let's put a bit more bait out and obviously it's important to put bait out, not when there's fish in the swim or you can spook them, so I'm just going to trickle it out as well, one by one, rather than loads. Wait for the fish to move out and then uh, drop a few more baits out. There's half of this. Not actually weighed him yet, but uh, he's going to be around about the 31 pound mark. And uh, I've been feeding mixers close into one of the margins for about three hours today. And uh, this one's been going absolutely mental for him. And Baz was lingering around, he took one or two, but uh, couldn't get him taken confidently. And then at the end of the evening, I thought, right, I'm gonna have the best fish that's amongst you that's taken confidently, and it was this one. And uh, it's one of the oldest fish in the lake, fish known as Arthur. And uh, very, very happy with that. I'm just gonna let Arthur go. There he is, big old hump on him, big old shoulders. As I say, he's been feeding on mixes for about, well, it must have been about two hours at least. He really had a good old gorge on him. He'd have like 10, 15 minutes on him and then uh, when he'd come back. At the end of the evening, I thought, right, I'm gonna have you. And uh, we had him, and there he is. Good old wide, wide set of shoulders on him. Big old fish. Let's let him go. Come on, boy, you can go now. There we go. One of the oldest fish in the lake. Oh, boy.
There he goes. One of the worst to wear. Very happy with that though. And I wouldn't have done it. Piece of camera. <laughs> oh, don't get without me these two dudes. <laughs> Thanks, chaps. Thanks for your help, passing me the net and helping me with the weighing and stuff. Much obliged. And this oh, is Jamie, head bailiff. He's had them all, but he's still fishing here as well. <laughs> but leave Baz alone. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Well, here we are then. We're in peg eight again. And uh, I've just put Baz back. So I thought I'd just do a little bit of talk to you. Um, chaotic night, really. Uh, even though I only had three fish, I, uh, I arrived at five o'clock last night. After work, 5.30, something like that. And there's been quite a lot of fish sort of congregating on this plateau out here over the last uh, few days so uh, this is the area that I wanted to be in and there have been one or two uh, anglers on as well over uh, the course of the last few days fishing sort of down that end of the lake and there have been one or two fish getting caught but I knew the big ones were, were in this area because I'd seen them on Monday and during the course of two or three days they ain't really going to move a great deal especially with the amount of weed that's out, out here that was what I was thinking anyway and um, I got here and started seeing one or two fish lobbing out on the on the plateau. I uh, don't think you can see at the moment, but there's there's some really thick weed beds out there, and uh, there was fish sort of dancing in the weed, really sort of putting on a performance yesterday. Not just in front of this swim, but um, also in front of that swim over there, which is which is swim 14, I think it's called. And I contemplated going over there, but because I know that the island. Here to the left of Peg 8 also fishes quite well, um, at night especially. I thought, right, being, being here for just a night, it seemed the right choice to go in this swim. So, um, anyway, I got the rods out, got one out, uh, two out onto the plateau, and within half an hour of having the rods out, I was just having some dinner, and, and one of them went with a little common on the end. And that was really sort of the indication that um, this was the area really that was going to fish tonight. and. Um, just as Gav, who's opposite in Peg 8, where that white van is, was, was setting up at about 6 o'clock, they started showing in front of him, and there was not just one or two fish, there was sort of half a dozen of them sort of popping their heads out, and I had a, another one about 12 o'clock in the night, um, a little one, just from out here, off um, another clear area that's out on the plateau, and then about 4 o'clock, 5 past 4, something like that, the right-hand rod, just gave out two bleeps, and um, the tip sort of was bent round, and normally, when you get these, these smaller fish out of the lake off, off the plateau, they tend to sort of scoot them across the top of the weed and them into the net quite quickly. But um, there was something different about this, this particular tape because the, the rod sort of was just locked up and whatever was on the end was just stuck solid in the weed and it was a lot different feel to it. And instead of sort of hoiking it and pulling and uh, probably pulling the hook out and stuff, I um, went and got the boat, which is in one of the swims over there, and um, went out to the to where the fish was, and it was pitch black, obviously at four o'clock. And um, I got to where to where the leader was just going into the weed, and I had a great big ball of weed on the line. And then um, I sort of freed that, and then put the rod into a nice bend, and then up popped this huge mirror, which I wouldn't say I straight away I noticed it as being bad, but I knew it was a good fish. And then uh, with that, the fish sort of dived down into the weed, and then went on an almighty surge of power and it, and, and it pulled me in the boat right into this bay round here. And it was at that point when I, I started thinking, I think you've got Baz on the end here because one or two of the lads have been telling me he really fights hard and stuff. So um, anyway, I followed him obviously in the boat, not putting too much pressure on, didn't really want to um, weaken that hook hold and stuff. And eventually he, uh, he succumbed and I got him in the net. And as soon as I got him in the net, I went to scoop him up. There's a bit of weed over his eyes and stuff. And uh, as I scooped him up, his tail was just hanging out the back of the of the net and uh, it was at that point when I noticed it was slightly droopy and I got him into the net and thought, yeah, that's got to be him. And yeah, when I looked at him closer, it was Baz. I could see it was Baz and obviously made up, absolutely made up. That's my target fish in the, in the net. And 39 pound, one ounce. An absolute brute of a Yorkshire carp. Very, very pleased with that. Got her after work yesterday. Uh, probably arrived at the fishery probably about half past five last night and got the rods out quite quickly. Saw some fish on the plateau out in front of Peg 8 and uh, they were sort of dancing on the surface, a lot of little commons and stuff. And thought, right, I've set up there for the night, it's always pretty productive at night in Peg 8, so 
and I knew that Baz was kicking around the area because I'd seen him in that area sort of uh, two or three days ago and uh, lo and behold at four o'clock this morning big old lump of a Yorkshire carp turned up very very pleased indeed very very pleased just the fish that I came to the lake to catch and uh, to actually be holding it now is just fantastic fantastic moment and there's the other side of him I mean to catch him at any weight I'd have been really happy but to catch him at a pre-spawning weight at 39 one that's fantastic. Uh, one of the lads, Liam, who's standing behind the camera now, he had him last year when he was spawned out at 33. So obviously he does go up and down in weight. And uh, he had done 39.6 in the winter. So 39.1, I'm happy with that. Very, very happy. And I'm pretty sure that one day this fish is gonna go on to make 40 pounds because it's growing very, very steadily. And uh, he's an old warrior, so we're not gonna keep him out of the water for much longer. Let's get him back home, but very happy. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the rig that I've been using on Tyrum, and indeed the rig that I used to catch baby bars last night. It's dead simple, it's just a, a Nash safety clip with a four ounce dumpy pair lead, and then we've got round about 10 inches of uh, missing link. Now, I'm a big fan of braided hook links, and obviously, Nash don't do a braided hook link, so I've stripped the outer coating off that. And then that's attached to a size six fang X hook, and that's line of liner style. And then we've got a 20 mil hook bait hard on the bottom. Now most of my fish have come from uh, Tyrum using the old coconut creams, but uh, I have from time to time tried the Scopex squid as something a little bit different. And believe it or not, it's not done that well for me. I, it's come with the odd fish, but um, certainly not been as successful as the coconut cream. But last night, typical of Scopex squid, it was the uh, uh, the Scopex squid that uh, only had one rod out on the Scopex squid, and it was that one that was picked up by Baby Baz. So uh, it lives up to its reputation. It is a big fish bait. It's been going strong now for 20 odd years. So if you want to try a bait that you can be sure works and is very, very attractive to the big carp, then uh, obviously you won't be going uh, far wrong if you try that. Now, uh, as you can see, the rig itself is really simple. I won't talk you through how to tie it up. If you want to have a look at it closer up, then get hold of the 2014 Nash DVD because I talk you through step by step um, how to how to tie it up. It is dead simple. There's nothing fancy about it, and it works from wherever I go, from water to water around the world. So if you want a, um, a rig that you're confident in, give this one a go. Big old fish like this. Gives you backache. But I don't mind having backache for a big one. It's the fish that I came to the lake to catch. And to eventually get him is absolutely fantastic. It really is. When you get a target fish in the net, it's an absolute buzz in your angling, it really is. Because you put all that effort in to catch something. And then uh, when it turns up, the one you want, it feels fantastic, it really does. I've had no sleep, so I had a couple of fish in the night, got one fish in the night and a, an aborted take, and then this one at four, and I've got to go to work in a minute as well, so. But it's gonna be an easy day at work, knowing that uh, I've put all the hard effort and the work in to catch this one, and he's turned up. Let's let him go, there he goes. Baby Baz, very, very happy indeed. Thanks for your help, Liam. No worries, mate. Really, really chuffed with that, mate. Get in there. Very, very much for your help, mate. <laughs> Cheers, dude. Well done, mate. Thanks, fella. Thanks.